Hey everyone, it's Chelsea from the Allen County Public Library and in this video we will be showing you how to access and use Ancestry.com. Under normal circumstances you can use Ancestry right here in the library free of charge, but because of the pandemic they have allowed us to expand our license to let you use that at home. So in this video, Miss Amanda is going to show you how to access that from your home computer and how to do some basic searches on their database. And in the end, I will tell you a little bit about what I've learned about my family through using Ancestry.com. So let's get started. Hey, it's Amanda from the library, and I am going to show you how you can access a free library edition of Ancestry.com that is available for free through Kentucky Virtual Libraries. So if you go to our website, allencountylibrary.com, it will look like this on your page. I want you to scroll down until you see a bunch of buttons on the bottom of the screen and use the scroll bar here to the right until you find Kentucky Virtual Library. So you'll click on that and then there'll be one more link that you'll click on to access Kentucky Virtual Library. And if you have time, I would really encourage you to look at their website. There's lots of free databases and things that you can use to access free materials for research purposes or leisure or fun, things like that. So while this is loading, it's going to bring you to a page that looks something like this. And as you scroll down, there will be a list of things to choose from. We're going to click on databases. And then the first option is Ancestry Library Edition. Now, when you're accessing this from home, it will ask you to type in your library credentials and it'll ask for a specific username and password. So we're going to uh, give you that information at the end of this video. Just know that you will have to type in a special username and password once you click on this link here. But when you're at the library, it will automatically uh, come to the Ancestry page. So this is the page that you will start your search for your genealogy records. Um, whenever I am talking to a new patron who is interested in learning more about their past, I always make sure that they are comfortable with finding information that they may not necessarily know about, but also they need to really have concrete evidence and be sure on what they know that they're searching for. So I always, before you begin a search, start with what you know. And that's what we always encourage them to do because if they know certain facts, we can build upon those for the later searches that they can connect to. This page shows all different kinds of resources that you can use in order to document your search and keep everything in order. I recommend going to the Charts and Forms button here, and once you do that, it brings up a list of different uh, types of printables that you can print off in order to jot down and keep everything in order for you. I use the ancestral chart all the time here at the library for my patrons and it really keeps everything in line and in sync and just makes sure that everything is, is staying in order. So before you even begin your search, you want to find a way to organize your documentation in a way that you can really keep up with because if you're like me, you're going to go into a big rabbit hole searching for all kinds of different things. And if you don't write it down, you're going to forget what you found. So make sure to um, take advantage of these different resources that they provide for you in order to document your search results. So we'll go back and we'll just show you a couple of different avenues that you can take depending on what you're searching for. So hit down here at the bottom, you can search census records and that is going to give you information on where your ancestor may have lived. Vital records will show birth and death certificates. Um, military records will show if your um, ancestor may have been involved in the military, if they were in the draft, things like that. And immigration records will show um, different places of entry where they may have came to the United States when they were coming from a different country. These quick links at the bottom 
We'll also uh, let you find quick ways to begin your search. Um, I always, though, start my search here at this big green button, begin searching, and we'll just do a quick overview of how you can search a quick record on your own. And we'll just use an example um, with something that I have had used in the past for me. So begin searching is what I always kind of go with first. And again, you want to start with what you know. What do you know? And then we'll build upon that. Having your documentation, your papers in hand to jot down information as you go so you don't lose what you have found. I know his name was William David Calvert. I know that he was born in Allen County, Kentucky. And I know that he was born in 1917. And once I type in those things that I know for sure, you would, put, you would push search. If you want to add more options, like if you knew who your ancestor was married to, or if you knew um, the, the siblings or the children of your ancestor, you could click on this drop down box and it would narrow your search result quite significantly. But for this purpose, we're just gonna push search and show you just how many records you can retrieve from typing in a few words, uh, a place, and then a date of birth. So just from typing that in, we were able to find 83,770 documents that pertain to a William David Calvert. Now that means there may be a person's name who was David Calvert. There may be a person's name who was just William Calvert. There may be people in here who just have Calvert in, the, in their subject line somewhere. Um, usually the top results are the ones that are gonna match you first. And I do know that my pa's dad was David Ritter Calvert. I know that my pa's birthday was March the 7th of 1917. So this is going to give me a record that belongs to my paw, and it is a World War II draft card. And I think these are really fun to see because it's going to show a physical description of my ancestor, as well as the address that they lived at the time, their occupation, and it's going to have his signature on there. So at this time he was 23. It says that he worked at Wilson's Shoe Shop here in Scottsville. It says that he had a light complexion with gray eyes, just like me, and blonde hair, just like me. And I think that's pretty cool to see the similarities there that we have passed on from generation to generation. You can click on the um, actual document and they will have a scanned copy of the original documentation for you to look at. You can print these off, it's free to print off. So take advantage of that. Just make sure that you've got a way to file things away and keep it organized because you'll end up having stacks and stacks and stacks of things. So we'll zoom out so you can see everything real fast. <clears throat> Just a basic little draft card. William David Calvert says he was 23. It has his parents' name on here, his dad, Mr. David R. Calvert, who is his father. It shows where he uh, worked at, and then it also has his lovely signature there at the bottom. So that's just one example of many that you can use this free Ancestry Library for, and we really hope that you take advantage of this free resource. We are hoping that they extend the free um, service for at-home use past June, but for now we do know that it's available through June. So really take advantage of this resource, and if you have any questions, you can give us a call. Thanks for joining us and have a great day. All right, hopefully those tips and tricks from Amanda have helped you and will help you find more about your ancestry. And I wanna tell you that some of those tips and tricks helped me learn a little bit about my family. In the beginning of the pandemic, I wanted to learn if some of the rumors that I'd heard about my family were true. So my grandmother had told me that we were related to royalty in England and I just had to check it out. And it turns out that I am. I am a direct descendant of the Duke of Norfolk and he is the uncle or was the uncle of Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, both of which were Queens of England and married to King Henry VIII and Catherine was beheaded by him. So 
I have royalty in my blood. You can call me Queen Chelsea if you want to. <laughs> um, just to remind you that this service is free to you to use at home now through June 1st, and it could possibly go beyond that. But um, if you have any questions and need help, you can always call us at 270-237-3861, and we will try to help you. All right, thank you.